So I would not recommend taking these things apart. We have wonderful technicians to do it. But I thought I would show you how to put it back together. So this case just clips on over the edges here. So this is the last thing to come off is this front. Okay. And once it's on, you have to make sure it clips very much into place and then it clips there so it hooks under this bit here and there are two screws here to adjust this plate this plastic bit here under there but once it's clipped in okay there's a black screw which goes here okay and that holds that part there so I'll put that there And this one is e this one is easy to remember. This one is not so easy to remember when you're putting it back together. There's a little screw there. Okay, so that goes into there. And now it's get tightened up. And that holds it onto the front. From the bottom, I'll show you these after. There are four of these, two for the front and two for the back panel. And then there are all sorts of little bits and screws, which I'll show you as I get to the next part. I'm going to tighten these up first. So the next panel piece, the back, goes on like this. Okay, and you have to lift the handle. There are a lot of, there are five screws that hold this part into the front panel. So you can see it just slides like that and then it starts having some points where it needs to be squashed in and clipped in. Okay, so one second. Okay, so we just push these together like this and then once it clicks Oops, and then we've got this bit here, which hooks in underneath there as well. There we go. So that's now all clipped in. So as you can see, this is a machine which is designed to come apart, but even then it still has little clips and bits which are made of plastic, which could, can, could eventually break. And that would be very sad. But we're okay at the moment. It's good, tough plastic. So there are five screws. One, two, you can barely see it. Three, four, five. Which hold this back panel to the front panel. So this one can't happen yet because I've got to put on the nose piece here and the tension cover. But I can put this one on. Just to hold it in place. Like that. Remember, you're dealing with plastic on plastic, so one snugs, one doesn't tighten. So by that I mean is you just tight, tighten it gently. So you snug it in. You don't over tighten. Once it goes tight, you just leave it. And with all screws, I always follow the rule I was taught in shop years ago. You tighten till it's tight, and then you loosen it back a quarter turn. And the reason is, in most cases you can follow that rule, but the reason is because years later when you go to retighten this, you've got some movement in both directions to loosen a stuck screw. If you tighten it 100%, the only way you can do it is tighten it backwards, and that's often not easiest. So that gives you a little bit of maneuvering in both directions when you do that. Okay. Now comes, so I've got one, two, three. I always use a somewhere, as you see, to put the screws, because it's not, then you know if you've missed one, which is kind of, you don't want to do. So I've got one, two, three, four big ones which I'm trying to remember where they come from, but it all becomes obvious as you're putting all of the covers back on. So.
So, now we're going to get to the top cover. This requires a bit of fun here. Oh yes, now it all becomes clear. So, there are also two of these type screws which go in here and they screw into the aluminium body. So get my screwdriver that f and they're star drivers so you have to, you know, as I say, go to a technician to do this. Because you need a lot of star screws and hexes and stuff. In this case they're stars. So you have to have a star driver set, but they're quite common nowadays. It's not like they're difficult to find. And if you buy a you know, different different types of accessories and screwdriver sets, you'll be able to find a lot of these in them. The only thing is you do need one which is very long. And I recently found these. So I think they're actually for a drill or a screwdriver, but they're really long. So the problem I found with most of my little ones, like that, is you can't get them into the holes. Very cleverly designed to make servicing impossible. But I did find these recently, and they're magnetic, which helps a lot. So as you can see here, I stuck one of these onto my sewing machine so I can get a repair screwdriver so it just pops in there and then now I've got a magnetic screwdriver which makes my life a lot easier so I have one two three more of these to go and two I can figure out so this is always the challenge where does the third go? Ah! I know where the third goes great we've got them all so two go to secure this nose plate and one goes in to secure the protector for the tension which looks like this. It's very surprising that that's one of the things you have to take it's very difficult to get on and off it sits here but it's hooked onto the top cover and you have to have the top cover on in order because it, it actually clips onto the top cover however it hooks like in this shape around the front of the machine so you can't actually remove it very easily and this is the next bit of fun so okay so what we'll do is I'll put the nose plate on first since that's obvious this will screw it and it hooks on in fact it, it has to hook onto the top plate as well but it will sit there with screws. So, let's put it in place. And get a little screwy in to hold it in. So you see how that gets held in. Normally I do it... Okay. Later on, but it doesn't matter. It's more fun to see it going in. Snug that in, quarter turn back. Okay. And this one. Try to move slightly back, I think. There you go, so I was just tightening up these, this one and this one. And that holds on this nose plate here. That just clicked in that time. That's the thing about plastic, it all has to click in magically or it doesn't fit. Okay, so the top cover now. I am just going to put this here. Okay. Now, it gets a little bit difficult here, so I'll move you in again. In order to get this top cover, you have to move the bobbin wander hook out of the way because it, it catches out of the way and then it 
will move fine. So what you can see now, this is here. And it all coming backwards. This is where everything has to just hook into these places. Okay, so that's now just sitting there. And there are this thing needs to go on. So you see that little piece there? That's just attached to the top cover with one of these little plastic little screwies. Okay. That goes to here. And so if you remember this, this is how it works in reverse. So this is the order of putting it back together. The order to take it apart is exactly the reverse. Okay, so that is now in place. Okay. Perfect. All in place. And then there are two. Down there. One and then two. Oops. Drop the screw. You know what always happens is because I just switch over to my non-magnetic ones. There we go. I got the right screwdriver this time. Go to the bottom here. Secure this on. Make sure it's not cross-threaded. There we go. Okay. And so normally you would never need you know that's what the clean when you when the uh Annual maintenance happens. This is where they get in. They take the covers off, they clean all the fluff, and they re put what grease in certain places in here. So it's got to be done, not for the faint of heart. So there are only two parts which you need to go back on is this horrible top cover. And by that I mean it's got these ghastly little pins in the edge which are really fiddly to get into these tiny little holes there so there's quite a bit of bending and manipulation which I do not like doing to get these in you have to kind of bend the cover in order to get it in the other way is is to do it when it's to try and take it off first, but then it's there, so it went in. But it's very difficult to get, so you can see it blocks getting access to that little screw there, when that cover's there, so it makes it difficult to get at that. So you could use a little, little small one, or on a bendy one or something, that would be easier. Then you don't need to take this bit off, but otherwise I always have to take it off. And last but not least are the bottom screws. So one second and I'll tip it. So the bottom of these machines is a bit of a, a minefield of well, which ones do I loosen. And this took me a bit to figure out the answer to that. But the secret is that one, that one, that one, and that one I think. The rest hold the machine part, so the all the mechanism, the frame and everything else to the base. And in fact this one is built in Sweden. I'll just notice that on the back, the bottom. So where they built the Husqvarna Viking, they built this one. Spot the stupid boy moment. I was right. The screws are different lengths. <laughs> So I'll bet you this one, which is super long, will probably go in the hole correctly. So if I t oops, if I take the fourth one out, 
then we can figure out where we're going and which one goes in which hole. Okay, so we have a short one, two middle ones, and a very long one. My guess would be the very long one goes in here where it wouldn't connect before. So let's see what we get. There we go. So that's connected. There was a schoolboy error. Okay. And then the short one. I'm guessing goes here. I'm sure it was a second hole, this one here. Okay, that's not connecting, so it's definitely a longer screw. I'm going to guess this one goes here then. And that means that these ones go in opposite corners. You know, Tiago, you just come back from your walk. And last but not least, this one goes into here. Now we just have to fire up the beast and start using it again. So I finally figured it out. Stupid boy moment. They, these long screws are necessary. They go on the bottom. I was losing my mind or I'd done something really stupid but I was just didn't recognize that these both had two really long screws which are needed for this part here and then they connect there we go that's a lot better perfect all put back together Thank you.